Hi everyone, I should say good morning. It's about 8.30 here in South San Francisco at uh, actually the city in the city of Colma, which is also known as the city of the dead because there are so many cemeteries here and there are more deceased people than the actual living population of the city. I'm standing here in front of the Holy Cross mausoleum, and I'm happy to see that it's actually open. It's early in the morning, and sometimes the mausoleums don't open until later in the day. I'm here to visit the final resting place of Abigail Folger. For those of you who don't recognize the name, she tragically was one of the victims of the Manson family murders back in 1969. Abigail and her boyfriend Wojtek Frykowski and their friend Jay Sebring were staying with Sharon Tate at her home in Beverly Hills on that fateful night. They were all just at the wrong place at the wrong time. Charles Manson just died less than a year ago on November 19th, 2017 at the age of 83. And it also just occurred to me that next year will be the 50th anniversary of the killings. And over the last almost 50 years, lots of people have visited the gravesite of Sharon Tate, but not as many have visited Abigail Folger. So I wanted to do that today. Knowing that I was coming to Colma, California, she was near the top of my list of people that I wanted to visit and also show you how to find her grave in case you'd like to visit in person as well. It's a very beautiful mausoleum, and it's not in a style that I think I've ever seen before. It's on the modern side, and yet it has that very grand feel of some of the very old mausoleums that, uh, that I've visited. I'll pan around as I usually do so you can see a little bit more of the mausoleum where she's laid to rest. And once we're back outside, I'll tell you a little bit more about her life and how she happened to be at Sharon Tate and Roman Polanski's home on that historic night. I just redid the GPS for Abigail Folger's crypt here. When I got here, I searched using the GPS on the Find a Grave Memorial, and it took me completely to the other side of the cemetery to a different mausoleum. But this is actually the mausoleum where she is, so I redid the GPS to, uh, to correct it. So whoever did it before just I don't know if they were in the wrong place or maybe their GPS wasn't working very well. So now the GPS will take you directly here. It's in the main mausoleum. So when you come in the, the gates, there's two different gates on Mission, I think it's Mission Road or Mission Street. There are two different gates to get in. You want to go into the older gates and then you just go straight up the road until you hit this uh, mausoleum. It's the old mausoleum. There's a newer mausoleum down by the, the newer gate and the newer sign. If you love cemetery, I'm sure you could spend days or weeks or months in here and never really see all of the, uh, the headstones. But I wanted to tell you a little bit about Abigail Folger in case you don't know who she is. Let me stand over here. You can see it's a foggy day, which is pretty common. We're right, uh, you know, we're just, I don't know, I think it's maybe 10, 
15 miles to downtown San Francisco. So the fog comes in in the morning. It's supposed to be a warm day today, sunny day. It's supposed to be a sunny day, but right now it's uh, pretty overcast and, and gloomy. But I think that's okay, since I'm gonna tell you a, a story that's uh, pretty gloomy. Abigail Folger was an heiress to the, the Folger's coffee family. So from what I've read, when she was in New York, she met Polish author Jerzy Kaczynski, who introduced her to Wojtek Frykowski. Wojtek was Polish and didn't speak much English, so apparently she was helping him learn to speak English, and they hit it off and became a couple, and eventually moved back to California together. Now, I'm not sure their connection with if, uh, if Abigail knew Sharon Tate first, or if Wojtek was a friend of Roman Polanski, who was married to Sharon Tate. I think that's more likely since he was Polish and Jerzy Kaczynski and Wojtek were all Polish. I'm guessing they probably had that uh, connection in common and that's how they knew one another. So in the summer of 1969, Wojtek and Abigail Folger were house sitting for Sharon Tate and Roman Polanski while they were, I believe, in Europe making different films. And so Sharon Tate returned, but uh, Roman Polanski was still overseas working on a film on the night that Sharon Tate and Abigail Folger and Wojtek Frykowski were all murdered at the El Cielo home by the uh, Manson family. So I was just thinking how odd it is. And I know I've mentioned this many times before. It's like fate, you know, being in the wrong place at the wrong time or the right place at the right, right time. And how do they all just end up together there? That fateful night is, I think, what makes this more sad and strange and creepy than than just about anything else for me. It's just the, uh, was this just uh, bad luck and bad timing? Or was it, uh, was it fate? Look at all these uh, headstones here. I just can't get over how many, how interesting these are. So I'm gonna try to look at as many as I can today, but there are over a dozen cemeteries in Colma. So I'd like to see as many as possible today. So I'm not sure. I'm definitely going to have to come back. I'm not going to be able to even uh, see a fraction of what I'd like to see today. So the other thing I wanted to share with you is something that I didn't know at the time. I used to live in uh, West Hollywood for about a decade. I know I've mentioned that before on this, this channel. A few miles from where I live is a restaurant ca called El Coyote. It's one of the most famous and most popular Mexican restaurants in Los Angeles and we used to eat there all the time you know for the decade that I lived there I can't even tell you how many times we ate there it was excellent food uh, it was on I believe Beverly Boulevard near Fairfax High School and the farmers market in that uh, general area just a couple miles from where I lived and only years later now this was in the late 70s and 80s when I lived there and only years later did I read that Abigail and Sharon and Wojtek, they had all eaten there. Oh, the Jay Sebring also was, uh, was there uh, with them. I, I don't know how I forgot uh, Jay Sebring. But um, he was, Jay Sebring was uh, apparently an old boyfriend of Sharon Tate's. And he was also a friend of Abigail Folger's. And... I believe she had financed the opening of his new salon, hair salon, in San Francisco. So that's, so again, I'm not sure who knew, knew whom first, but uh, they were all friends and all four of them were out to dinner. Just hours before they were murdered, they were out to dinner at the El Coyote Mexican restaurant on Beverly Boulevard in Los Angeles. It's really just blocks from Hollywood and West Hollywood. and. All the years that I ate there, I never 
knew that that's where they were just hours before they were all killed. I don't know, it's hard to know what to say about that. I just wanted to share it with you. It's just one of those random things. It just, maybe that's the, maybe that's it. Maybe all these things are just random. Maybe they're meant to be, maybe they're fate, or maybe they're just random coincidences. I don't know, what do you think? I really don't know. I mean, sometimes I think they're meant to be, other times I think they're just, they're so weird. They have to be just uh, completely random. So I go back and forth on it. How about you guys? So let me know what you think. It's just still hard to to wrap your head around af you know, after all of these years. So anyway, much love for Abigail Folger and all of the other victims of the uh, Manson family. If you remember Abigail Folger, and you enjoy today's trip to her final resting place, please give this video a thumbs up and share it with a friend and leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe, and I hope to see you on my next road trip to the past.